Hi there, it's Connie Ray. Welcome to Connie Ray's Craftroom.com. Today's craft project is this gorgeous bag. I call it a bag and a box, basically because it is a bag, but it's also a box. So you can put in, don't mind that stamping, that was just an idea that I didn't use. Um, you can use this as a box with a lid or a bag with a lid. Really, really easy. The original concept came from Diane Hussey. Um, she was on YouTube and I saw her do this and I thought, what a wonderful bag. It is really worth recreating. So I have done this um, recreation. So I'll show you how I've done it. You're going to need, for the stamp sets, um, well actually for the paper, you're going to need some crumb cake, uh, 5 by 11 and some designer series paper and that designer series paper is from the Joyous Noel um, this specialty designer series paper and it's got that gorgeous foil glimmer in it and it just goes beautifully with crumb cake so I can't um, express how much I really like this one um, so you'll need those colors so I'll do the box with you first and then I'll go through how I've embellished it so to start with the bottom of the bag you're going to need the um, sorry jumping all over the place you're going to need the um gift bag punch board for this as well but it makes it so much easier okay so for the bottom of the bag this has got to be 11 inches in length and five inches in uh width and for the lid you're going to need 11 inches of designer series paper via um, and the width is going to be three and a half inches so with the lid, I will show you how I've done this. You need your scoring board. Just turn that over. Really easy to do. Um, we're going to score the lid on this and we're going to score at uh, three and a half. Oh no, sorry, three and a quarter, I should say. Three and a quarter, four and a quarter, five and a quarter, eight and a half, nine and a half, and ten and a half. And that's all the scoring that we're going to be doing. We're going to burnish our lines, as they say. Try not to press too hard on your designer series paper when you're doing your lines because it will rip if you do press too hard. It takes a bit to rip it, but it will rip if you press too hard. So we're going to burnish our lines. Now there's two little pieces in here that we have scored. Um, pretty hard to see, but it's there. There's this one here, a pinch here, and there's this pinch here. And those are the ones that are marked at the four and a quarter and the eight and a half mark. But what you want to do is just to make sure that these little um, inserts point up to you when they're folded, not that way. You want them up this way. So they are looking at you because this is the top of your box and we're going to actually put some holes in it with our punch board and this is your glue flap here so we'll fix that up soon so that's your lid that's how your lid's going to look but we're going to be punching that first so we will do that now and get that out of the way and we're going to punch some circles so we're going to be using the top end of the punch which is this bit here not this bit here which is what's making the bag and we'll do this next for the base but for the lid we're going to bring it first of all up to the the oops sorry let me see if i can get that in a bit closer for you so that you can see it okay let me try that all right so that little notch that you've got on the top of this punch is where you're going to put your first edge of the paper and you're going to punch that's creating one hole. Then we're going to move it across to the next, the first line that becomes available, and we're going to put a punched hole in there. Then we're going to miss the little M that we made, that little point that comes up to us. We're going to pass on that one, and we're going up to the next scored line, which is here, and we're going to punch. Then we're going to miss the big square and we're going up to the next line and we are going to put a punch there. 
we're going to miss that little M that comes up to us again and we're going to go to the last line of our scored line and we're going to punch again. Did that work? Yes. Okay, and that has given us our holes for our lid, as you can see. You can see there. Once it's glued down, you'll see properly. But that is where your ribbon is going to go. So it's quite easy to do. That's our lid. Okay, so I will do the rest of that in a moment. For now, we're going to bring over the bottom of the bag and we're going to be using this section of the bag maker, which we call the gift bag punch board. I like to use my stylus, but some people can you you can use the actual piece that comes in it. Oh yeah, I just like to use this one. So this is by five and eleven. So the small is for a, a piece of paper that is ten inches long. The medium is for a piece of paper cardstock or designer series paper at the size of 11 inches long and the large is for a 12 inches long for this one this is 11 so we're going to be using the medium the M right here so the first thing we're going to do is bring it up to the line we're going to go to the M and we're just going to score down and the other thing we're going to do is punch then we're going to bring this line that we put in using the M up to this line here and this notch indicator here, which you may not be able to see. Now we're going to put a panel into the side of the bag. So we're going to go down there, down there, down there, and down there, and we're going to punch. Or you can punch first. Doesn't want to work with me today. There we go. It's gotten a bit cranky, I think. Okay, and so we're going to move across this, bringing this line across to this line again here. And we're going to do a medium. So we're going to do the top of our bag. We're going to do our medium line. And we're going to punch. Oh, make sure it stays there. Now we're going to move this medium line across to the beginning. Oh. Across to this line here again, the start line. It's always this is the start line it says here, and that's always the start line that's going to be your focal point. And we're going to put another side of the bag in. And punch. And the last one we are going to bring up to the start line. The last line that we've put in there. And we're just going to punch. Doesn't want to cooperate today. Probably because I've overused it. Okay, I think that's it. So we're going to. Oh, that one didn't want to come out. Okay, that's all right. We're going to trim this off anyway. So we'll just trim that around. Okay, so we'll just score our bag, uh, sorry, the bottom of our box and bag. So we've got this nice box thing happening. There is a section here that is the side of the bag. And if you want, you can fold it in just a fraction to help bring in the gusset on the bag, but you don't have to. It'll come in automatically once you start putting it together. But I find it does help a little bit. Okay, so we're just going to put a couple of notches in the side sides here. And we're going to use some Tombow because you want it to stay strong. It depends what you're going to put in the bag, but Tombow is probably the best one for this. Or some um, tear and tape, but I like to use the Tombow. Because it sticks so well and it's really strong it's a great adhesive so we're just going to bring this one up to the edge and just hold it for a few minutes 
until it grips and it will quite easily. And there you will see that you have the makings of the bottom of your bag and box. Bag and a box. I like that. And this one is so pretty. It really is pretty. Oh, I forgot to put a line in that one. Not to worry. You can see what's supposed to happen to it. Okay, so what we want to do now is to stick these down to make the, the bottom of the box really sturdy. So we're going to be putting our glue. Because it closes like this and then like that, you don't want glue on all of... Oh, you could. Yeah, it's all right. I just was very careful with my glue when I put it on before on my trial one. I just put it on the side here to start with to get the um, the flaps of the box sticking down. That's that one. And then the same with this one. Like I said, it depends what you're going to be putting in it. And, oh, I did that backwards. <laughs> As I do. That's all right. It'll still work. Um, coming on Christmas, there we go. This is a really good bag to make. All right, so we want to make sure this is squared off when we actually pop that down, which is a bit tricky because it does move a little bit, but it's easy to do. Just make sure you've got it straight. And then we're going to put some glue just on the top of the um, top flap here and then we'll press it all down just to make sure it gets a good grip and it's all square while it's still wet because that always helps doesn't it okay that looks good so just turn that over there we go and we will just do that little part where it gets all confirmed and stuck down oh. Okay. oh there we go just wasn't quite straight which is easy enough to do okay good all right so yep yeah, that looks good all right so this part here is the bottom of your bag and it's got the gusset side on it there your bag in a box so that's basically the bottom of your box done and this one is the top so we will just notch a little bit away on this one singular glue flap that's there and it's that size so we're just going to notch a little bit away so that it doesn't stick out and it does grab when we glue it And so we're going to pop some glue on here. Not too much because it will wet the paper and the paper will not stick very nicely and it will look really funny. So just enough that you require to make it stick. And then just line it up and hold it down for a few minutes so it grabs. Just like so. And as you can see, that is ready for a ribbon. And if you don't want to have a ribbon, you don't have to. You can just not put the holes in the top. And if you want to, you can just sit this on the top of your box like that. And I kind of like that one as well. And then you can just tie a ribbon around it. But it's entirely up to you how you do that. All right, that looks good. So we'll grab some ribbon. I'm using some crumb cake because crumb cake is just beautiful with this paper, this designer series paper. So I think about 16 inches is basically what I used, but it doesn't really matter. You'll work it out how much you want to use and which I liked the crumb cake with this complete project because it just goes really well. But you can use whatever colour you like. So we'll just pop that through. Starting tomorrow, I have to remind everybody that tomorrow there is um, a sale day. It's a celebration um, of the 30th anniversary, uh, yeah, the 30th anniversary for Stamping Up, and they're having a percent a sale. And I will include a link to that sale, and it's only for tomorrow. So if you're seeing this video in two years' time, it's not going to be relevant. 
<laughs> just in case. Now this is how I put the ribbon on. I found it easier to do it this way because you know how we're all fingers and fingers and thumbs when we do these things online. So I just tied a knot, left over right, as they say, technically speaking, and just held it down and then just pulled the left, holding down the bottom one. But these things do take practice, I have to say. And what's said in theory isn't always easy to do in practice. There we go. That doesn't look too bad at all. Okay, we'll just snip off our edges. For our beautiful crumb cake. It is a lovely colour, isn't it? Crumb cake. It's very neutral. Okay, so we've got the lid. We've got the base. And now we're just going to make sure you've got a seam in there where you stuck the glue flap down. And I'll just find it. It's on that side there. So I want to make sure that those seams just go together. It doesn't matter if they don't, but it's good if they do. And at first it might be a bit stiff to go together, but it will go together. Unless I've done some sort of major catastrophe, which means I'd have to start all over again. And that wouldn't make me too happy. Oh. It isn't normally this hard to get together once you've done it once or twice. There we go. Woo! Okay, so just put that down. So this is your bag in a box. Now you can push this down as far as you like. So if you don't want a long box, you can have a short one. Bag, box, whatever. Uh, or if you've got a big item, you've got plenty of room to move it. Isn't that clever? It's such a good idea. Okay, so the next thing that I have done is I have dressed up my embellishments. Sorry, I've dressed up my bag in a box. And I have done that using, um, okay, so we're using this um, sentiment here. I'll turn it around. And I've already cut it so that I don't have to do more work while you're watching. So I have used out of this set the Wishing You Well set. I'll just get this here. The Wishing You Well set, I have used the wreath there, which is on the outside, and I've used that crumb cake. And I've also used the Still Night stamp set, and I'm using Sending Warm Wishes Your Way sentiment. And I've stamped it onto a piece of crumb cake cardstock, and I have used the um, Layering Circles, sorry, Stitched Framelit Circles, which gives you a lovely stitched edge. I uh, don't know if you can see that. Yep, you should be able to see it. You can see the stitch edging around the actual um, sentiment. So I've cut that out. And underneath, I've used some of our glimmer paper, which is the orange. But it goes really well with the copper. As you can see, there's a very similar tone in it. So that looks nice as well. And I used the um, Layering Circles Scallop Framelit. And it is just a fraction, as you can see, bigger than the circle so or if you want you can make this actual the the glimmer paper bigger if you wanted to it's entirely up to you but that's what i used so see how you go that's what i've done all right so i've cut those out previously and i'm going to stamp them and cut them out previously and i'm going to use some dimensionals to pop this together and what i did with this lid here oh, sorry this um embellishment here for the, the, what do you call it, the sentiment, I actually have only placed it halfway down the bag so that if I want to adjust the box, I can make it shorter or longer if I choose to. Just depends. So you can do that. Or if you know exactly what the size is, you can just put it directly on. But you can't open it once it's stuck down, so you need to be mindful of that. So for this one, we can't put much dimension on and on the back layer but we can put some dimension on the front layer which we will do now so we'll just pop this on you could use as i said you could use a bigger um, piece of glimmer paper but i kind of liked it the way it was only because i really do love this paper and i don't want to cover it up all right so i think that on my last one that I did, I felt that there was a little bit, this was a little bit bare, but it's still good. But what I wanted to do is just probably bring this down just a fraction more so that it covers 
and still can move around on the on the lid without obstructing the actual box and the contents itself. So that worked well, but I'm just going to bring it down a little bit more. But you only want to be putting your dimensionals up the top end of your sentiment so that it just sticks here. So I'm not going to go all the way up that high. I'm just going to bring it down a bit. So we'll see how we go. I'll just turn that on the side so I can see where those dimensionals are and I'll put them right there. There we go. So it doesn't matter, you can push that right down, obviously still, to there, or you can bring it up still to there. It depends what you're going to put in it. But I think it looks better that way. This one just looks a little bit too on the short side for me in terms of placement, but each to their own. Okay, so now the last thing I used was our faceted gems. Where did I put them? Oh, there they are. And I used the gold ones, which I don't really do that often because I'm, I'm a big fan of silver. But the gold ones look really good again with the copper. So we'll just put some of these on for some decorations. Where did I put that other one? Oh, down here, which we will do again. There we go. And that's it. So how do you like that? I love it. It is the most easiest box to make. It is gorgeous in these colors. Absolutely beautiful. Do love it heaps in terms of color. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this project and I do hope that you give it a go because it certainly is worth it and it's very easy to do and so pretty. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you're having a good week. Well, I hope you do have a good week and I will see you shortly or soon with a new tutorial. Please do like, share, subscribe. And if you need any of the products that I have used today, you will find them in the links down the bottom of this YouTube tutorial. Hope you've enjoyed it. Looking forward to catching up with you soon. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.